Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the delicious cooking series. Now we're still on with our rice series edition and I'm about to show you the perfect way to cook your rice. So I've received a lot of messages from some of you telling me that your steamed rice never comes out perfectly after cooking. It's either it's too soggy or it's too mushy or it's too hard or there's something always just wrong with it. And I've decided to film this video tutorial to show you all the perfect way to cook your rice. Now there's some important tips to note before you start cooking your rice and I'm going to share it with you before we go into the main cooking process. Now there are different types of rice available in the market but I'm filming from Lagos, Nigeria and the most common rice that we use here is known as the parboiled rice. We also use all kinds of rice but parboiled is the pre predominant one here and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to make today. There are other types of rice like basmati, jasmine and the long grain rice and the short grain rice. There are a whole bunch of them but if you follow the, the rules that I'm using today, I'm going to show you today, it's almost you can all you can use the same rules to cook every other type of rice so you have to pay really close attention now my first rule is this you must ensure that you buy a quality brand of rice now no matter what you do if you do not buy a quality brand your rice is not going to turn out perfect there's so many varieties of there's so many rice brands in the market today some of them are good some of them are not good i have worked with the ones that are not good and i know that it really gave me a lot of hard work in the kitchen because no matter what i did it just didn't come out right so ensure that the rice you use is really really quality the second point to notice when you're cooking your rice ensure that you use a pot that has a very thick bottom now if you use a pot that has a thin bottom the the heat is not going to distribute itself evenly and it will end up burning up your rice really fast and you do not want that so the third tip is that your rice usually triples in size after cooking so you want to ensure that you use a pot that is large enough to contain the rice when it's cooked you don't want your rice spilling over or spilling <laughs> or bubbling out and you don't want to have a messy countertop i'm oh, sorry a messy gas cooker when you're done cooking so ensure that your rice is big enough to contain the quality quantity of rice that you're cooking the fourth tip is ensure that you wash your rice thoroughly now this cannot be i cannot overemphasize this enough you have to wash your rice i wash mine as much as six to seven times until the water runs clear so wash well and wash hard and just have fun while washing <laughs> Okay, now this this fifth tip is actually the tip that differentiates the the different types of rice. Now, different types of rice have the different um, um, water ratio. For example, the boiled rice that I'm going to be using today is uh, the water ratio for for this is um, two cups of rice to four cups of water. And when I'm talking cups, I don't mean uh, any type of cup. I mean the standard measuring cup. So today I'm going to be cooking two cups of parboiled rice and the, ratio, the water ratio for it is four cups of water. For basmati, I know it's one cup of rice to one cup of water. For jasmine, I know it's one cup of rice to one and a half cup of cups of water. I think I'm going to put the, the water ratio in the description box for you just in case you want to know. But for the parboiled rice today, I'm using four cups of water to two cups of rice. So with that being said, let's go right into the cooking process and let me show you how it works still. So the cooking process is pretty simple. I already have my pot here and I have my parboiled rice all washed and cleaned and ready to go. I'm gonna transfer everything right into the pot. And I'm also gonna throw in some water. I'm using four cups of water for this. And I always also like to add some salt to my rice because I find that it actually brings out the real taste of the rice. I'll just sprinkle some salt to just give it enough taste. I'll just give this a really good stir to combine. And then set my heat to medium low and bring this to a rolling boil. Now I'm sure you're wondering, Winifred, why didn't you allow the water to boil first before putting the rice? It's always advisable that you let the water and the rice come to the same boil at the same time, come rise to the same temperature at the same time so that the rice will cook evenly. If you don't do that, the rice won't cook evenly. Some will be tender, some will be hard, and then you really don't not, not, not like the outcome of the entire process, okay? So let's just bring this to a rolling boil and then cover my pot and then I will show you 
what to do next, okay? Okay, so guys, as you can see, the rice has come up to a rolling boil. What I'm going to do now is reduce my heat to the lowest. And then we'll just let the rice simmer gently with the steam until it is soft and tender. But before I cover the pot with the lid, I'm going to cover it first with some foil paper. Remember that it is not water that really actually cooks rice. It is steam, and that's why it's called steamed rice. So what the foil would do is help trap the steam inside the pot so that the rice will cook through without you um, adding any extra liquid to the rice. Okay? So, I'm just covering the pot now. And remember, reduce your heat to the lowest. Trust me guys, it works. Reduce the heat to the lowest and just allow the rice simmer gently until it is soft and tender. And this would take about 15 to 20 minutes. But I also forget, forgot to mention that yes, two cups of water to four cups, sorry, two cups of rice to four cups of water. But if per adventure, you, after 20 minutes you check and the, the rice is not yet tender to your satisfaction, because I like my rice um, not so soft. I still like it to have a little bit of bite in it. But if that's not your preference and you like your rice to be a little bit softer, you can go ahead and, and add more water to the pot just to cook it to your, your desired consistency or preference, okay? So let's just leave this to cook for another 15 to 20 minutes, okay? And I'm back to show you what to do next. Cheers to the good life. <laughs> always a fun time with Valletta. In the kitchen, there's always so much fun with Valletta. Okay, so the rice has been steaming for about 15 minutes now. It's time to check on it. Look at that. Now, to check if there's still some liquid left in the rice, just use the back of your spoon and just push the rice slightly to the side just to look, until you can see the bottom. And I can see that there's a little bit of water still left in here. So I'm just going to pat that back down and give it another three to four minutes until the water content is cleared up, but I can see that my rice is cooking and steaming perfectly and I like it. Okay, so I've given it another two to three minutes and yes, I can tell that it is done. Check it out, check it out guys. I'm just going to turn off my heat and you can see that my grains are standing apart. Some people usually say they add um, vegetable oil to their rice to make the grain stand apart. There's no need for that. I didn't even wash the rice. Some people actually wash the rice after cooking it halfway. They take it out, wash it again. There's no need for that. If you follow this step, you don't need to wash your rice the second time and you do not need to add any form of vegetable oil to make it fat, fat and to just pour the whole, like you're adding more calories to the rice and that's not really cool. So follow the steps that I've given you and you end up with perfectly beautiful rice and the grains standing apart just like this. Can you see it? Beautiful. Now you can go ahead and if you want to flavor your rice more, instead of cooking it with water, you can cook it with some chicken stock or beef stock. And then at this point, you can add some butter if you want. It actually takes the taste to another level. And you can also go ahead and add some um, diced vegetables. Sometimes I like to add carrots and, um, and bell peppers and spring onions to this. I, I find that it elevates the taste of the rice. But this is just the basic basic step or basic uh, method for cooking your parboiled rice and I hope you will incorporate this and start making your rice this way. I tell you, you always end up with the perfect result. So now you know the perfect way to cook your parboiled rice. I'm really excited that I finally got to share this recipe with you. I'll see you again next time with another beautiful recipe. But before then, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notif notification bell just beside it so you can get instantly notified whenever I upload a new video. So many more videos to come, guys. So many more. I'll see you again next time with another rice recipe. Until then, take care of yourselves, okay? Bye.